Today on Voiding Warranties, I play with a spark plug and a blowtorch for science. Voiding Warranties, where the only thing unmodified is the fire extinguisher. Alright, while other me gets some stuff ready in the background, let me explain a little bit about ion sensing. Have you ever measured the electrical resistance of something? You take your meter leads out and you run a very low current through the material you're testing. But have you ever measured the resistance of air? It seems that the resistance is very high, at least at room temperature and pressure. But once you ionize the air, like with a torch, the resistance goes down. And if you then use a high voltage, this resistance becomes relatively easy to measure. But not only does this resistance show the presence of ions, it also varies with the density of the ions. So it relates to the pressure of the air. So if I could only just put a pair of electrodes inside a car engine and hook a high voltage source to them, then I could figure out the exact combination of when to fire the spark plug and how much fuel to add to get the most power. Where will I find a pair of electrodes inside an engine? The answer is simple, the common spark plug. Now, this idea is not unique. In fact, there are a few vehicles on the road now that use limited implementations of this for camshaft position and detonation detection. But here's what I'm doing and where I've gotten so far. I took an Arduino and a logic level MOSFET. This is the building blocks for half the things I've done. Then I connected them to an ignition coil, primary winding, and a 12 volt source. Now normally the secondary winding would be grounded, and I did ground it, but not directly. Since I don't want to use the high voltage lead, for obvious reasons, I've tapped the line that goes to ground. When the coil fires, it sends a voltage spike in both directions. Negative goes to the spark plug, and this is in part to prevent burning out of your spark plug electrode, and the positive, it goes to ground. I've placed a 200 volt Zener diode to ground, and this limits that side of the coil to plus 200 volts, while not draining my high voltage power supply straight to the ground. I also have a 30 kilovolt diode to my 200 volt DC power supply and current mirror. This is to protect it from full ignition voltage and current. Now, I didn't have to use a current mirror, I could have used a simple voltage bridge to make this work. There are even some designs out there with multiple Zener diodes and a capacitor and no independent power supply. But this is what's worked for me so far. Now the output I get from this is 0 to 3.3 volts and that's relative to the conductivity across the spark plug. Under normal conditions with no ions, it's about 0 to 0.5. Now I'm not ready to share all the schematics involved in this because I don't know the right resistances to use and I'm still working out some things for use on the car. Let me show you a simple flame. All right, low voltage means low current. High voltage means high current. Roughly proportional to ion density and between the spark gap. As you can see, the voltage goes from 5 millivolts to over 130 millivolts when the torch goes over the spark plug. This is just measuring the resistance of the ionized air at atmospheric pressure. Now let me show you what it looks like with the spark plug running. As you can see, it's about 100 millivolts just from the residual ions after each spark plug pulse. But as I run the torch over it, it jumps to over 150 millivolts. All I need and now to make works. this work is a controller that can read the ion sensing signal and determine knock and peak pressure point. Then I could potentially create a closed loop ignition control for my car where it's measuring the actual in cylinder pressure to determine timing advance. All that is coming up on a later episode of Voiding Warranties. And if you liked my episode of Voiding Warranties today, please click like. And if you want to see more, please click subscribe.